everyone, my name is Savannah and welcome back to Mesa Gardens Zoo, our franchise mode project in Planet Zoo. And uh, it's been a little while. In last episode, we started and almost finished the exterior of a porcupine habitat. But to be honest, after the crashes I was having with franchise mode and Planet Zoo in general, uh, Planet Zoo and I needed a little bit of a break. So that's why it's been just a little while. But I figured today what we could do, since I am a little bit out of the loop on what the heck is even happening in this park. I see protesters, so I'm going to pause it and make sure they don't get too, too far. Um, I figured we could do a like a real time episode. So there will be no time lapse this episode. I'm just going to go through, check all of our notifications, uh, maybe work on this a little bit do things here and there just to get reacquainted with what the heck is happening with our zoo. This is something that I did like to do in both previous franchise zoo episodes. So do let me know if you enjoy it. Before we get started, I want to take a chance to thank this month's sponsor of the channel, Zoo King. Zoo King is a strategic zoo building card game where players will experience the nostalgia of a trip to the zoo and the thrill of building their own. This game is for up to four players and can take between 30 and 60 minutes around. So it is perfect for the addition to game night. The cards are beautiful. The selection of animals is fantastic. And if you like zoos or building parks, this game is going to be right up your alley. For the entire month of August, if you use the code SIMPLY on their website, linked down in the description below, you'll receive $5 off any, any of their bundles. So don't wait, entire month of August, save $5 on the best zoo building game out there. Let's head back to the video. Now, first and foremost, who in the heck are you here for? Oh, that makes a little sense. Uh, I may or may not have completely forgotten that we have uh, exhibit animals. It and it looks like I definitely did not set like the auto uh, thing up at all. So let's go ahead and move them away. Uh, unpause that, go ahead and, oh no, not move, sorry, not move. I want to get rid of you. Uh, there, great. <laughs> Look, I've already forgotten how to send animals to the trade center. Off to a fantastic start. Let's go ahead and just get rid of everyone except for a male and a female. That way they don't cause us problems because that's an easy problem to fix. Uh, we'll sell them in just a little bit. Looks like we had somebody mature. Somebody, oh no, we don't need a quarantine. Thank you though. Uh, vet research is complete. Let's see, more lar given stuff. Fantastic. That's probably just going to be like uh, diseases and things. Oh, look, we finished it though. So let's reassign... Let's go ahead and do the porcupine since it is our newest animal. See what we can get for them. Uh, hello. How are you? Say hello. Air. Okay, great. Goodbye. What did we have as far as challenges? Release two red river hogs to the wild. Habitat species welfare and adopt habitat species. Okay. Well, we may potentially be able to do uh, the Red River Hog one because we have a couple of them that have matured. So I do need to go ahead and look at who is in our zoo and what we want to do with them. Let's select not Red Crown Crane, Red River Hog. OK, so if I <laughs> if I remember correctly, the exclamation mark is the ones we want to keep. The asterisk is named by you. So I will not delete the names of the asterisks. However, they may potentially be released depending on the needs of our zoo. So currently these two are in the trade center. That's right. And Cherry was going to take over as our dominant alpha male as soon as Muddy was done. And Muddy, who is Muddy's mate? Uh, parents here, do you not have a mate? Oh no, right here. Uh, so Izzy, oh, Izzy and Thelma. Okay, so Izzy and Thelma. So Thelma's one we wanna keep as well. So maybe, 
Well, you know, Izzy, we can keep for now as well, too. And you know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my old way of labeling. This is how I labeled in, uh, what was it called? Tully Zoo? Yeah, this is how I labeled in Tully Zoo. And this is what my mind is defaulting back to. So this is what we're going to do. So we have a uh, male. Oh, you know what, though? Hmm. Maybe we'll do a keep for that. So that's in the trade center is keep. And then male and female are our current breeding pair. Oh my gosh, why is this so complicated? <laughs> Having to keep track of our animals. So male and then female. So the F obviously for female, M for male. Those are going to be our breeding pairs in the exhibit. A K in the trade center means we do want to keep that animal. Now, as far as that goes, or that being said, that means that Gidget is one because Gidget does not, oh, I can't see them unless they're in the habitat, um, doesn't have as high of a ranking overall. So Gidget, I think, is going to be released to the wild. Yes, thank you. And I like the idea of releasing some of our animals to the wild rather than just trading them all for uh, conservation credits, although I do need conservation credits. And let's do um, these two as well, unfortunately, just because, well, uh, Sada, is that how you say that? Doesn't have too bad of uh, stats. Ooh, and very good genes. The problem is, are you related to Cherry? You are. So I'm going to make the decision to go ahead and release Tabia to the wild. And we will put uh, Sada, 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 <laughs> excuse me if I'm er, incorrectly pronouncing that. We will put you up for trade, uh, send to the trade center. Yes, please. And we will see what we can get for her um and i think maybe that's how i'll do it um our storage reset filters where did she go because i did not remember that i have so many animals in here is she gonna be all the way at the bottom uh no so we're going to search so red river hog red river hog cherry oh maybe i need to uh do that that would be helpful can you show up in here, please? Trade history. There we go. Perfect. Uh, okay, so you're keeping. You are going to be traded. And I think you're worth a little more than 32. What should we do? Like 500, I guess? I guess if you don't trade, we can just put you back up there, right? But I want to see how much we can actually get because I want to be able to afford other animals with conservation credits. And then we'll keep Cherry. So that looks like it's the Red River Hogs taken care of. So now we just have our three uh, Muddy, Izzy, and Thelma all in there. Uh, the original three. They are not super old yet, so we don't have to switch them out. Um, but yeah, so what we'll do is we will, we will switch Cherry out for him and then these guys either trade out or release to the wild or sell or whatever we're going to do and get new females for cherry. And that's kind of how we're going to breed our good genes up there. So that's them taken care of. And that does earn us our reward as well. So beautiful. Pretty sure the gibbons are doing all right. Uh, I can hear them. There they are. Oh, that's right. I always want to check every episode. I want to check for gibbons to see if there's any up there. Oops, not a, absolutely not a polar bear. Largibbon, <gasps> nope, dang it. I want another color so bad. How come people aren't breeding them and putting them up for trade? Goodness gracious. <laughs> I want different color gibbons so bad. There's so many colors. <gasps> yeah, we're gonna get baby porcupines. Look, how sweet. Oh, we got two of them. How sweet are they? A little girl and a little boy. 
Oh, so if you have name suggestions for these little guys. Oh, look at their little faces. <laughs> They're absolutely adorable. Um, and while we're over here, actually, we should probably then label our males and our females, um, which still don't have names. And I'm sure there's potentially some that were left on last video. I apologize. I did not check the comments. Um, this video had taken long enough and I kind of just wanted to get it out there. So name suggestions do leave them down in the comment section and I will check them before next episode. Uh, you are a male our male here great and then did you just run inside yeah female perfect so we have baby porcupine so that one's that labeled oh good night uh we're about to have baby flamingos we have a baby orangutan which is very exciting i'm just going through and labeling now that i've decided to go back to my default labeling system uh which makes me feel so much more comfortable and so much less stressed uh, knowing what the heck is going on with the labeling. So that's great. Uh, let's go in here. Now this one, let's look at the Gibbons in the list view because there's a lot of them. Uh, Lar Gibbons, we'll do that for, oh, we only have three. I thought for some reason we had way more than that. Did we lose some? I don't think so, right? Okay, well anyway, Mr. Banana is our big old alpha man. Uh, let's see, who is your, I'm clicking on literally every tab, but the one I need, I wanted to look at his stats real quick. Okay. Uh, so Ningram, is that how you say that? Ningram, uh, is his mate and their offspring, uh, is just one dusty. That makes sense. Okay. So this is our female. This is our male. Perfect. The so male, female, that's great. And now let's go to Siamang. Siamang, no more Lark Gibbon. Oh, we only have three of these guys too. All right, well, big buddy Dave here is our male and uh, Utama, is that how you say that? Is our female, okay, great. Uh, that was not as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. Now, Mingo Mingos. Mingo Mingos, uh, maybe list view is best for them as well. Cause I feel like locating them all would be a little more difficult because there is a lot more of these guys than we had originally. Um, okay. So Oasis being our highest, uh, what is that called? Appeal rating, whatever it is. He's a male, he's an adult. Who are you? Are you an original? No. So you are an offspring. So what I think I want to do is I want to now keep Oasis as one of our main male uh, breeders. So let me see his children is only Clyde and asthma asthma. Yeah, you're in the trade center, but you can go because you're not high appeal. So Clyde is the only male offspring that he's related to. So that means that any other female is great to keep. So I'm gonna go through you, not, well, what are Clyde's stats like? Oh, Clyde, uh, yeah, not the best. <laughs> what are Oasis's? Not that bad. Um, okay, we'll keep Clyde around. He's a baby, so we don't wanna get rid of him as just a little baby. Um, but I'm going to get rid of some of these guys. Uh, one, because they're causing me problems and kind of irritating me. But two, because I just want to make sure that we have the uh, the ones that we really, truly want. Oh, and Diamond's pregnant as well. So that's good. We can get rid of some early and uh, avoid issues. So let's see if we can release all four of those. And that leaves us with a very male heavy group. Um, yeah, so Diamond, let's have some girls, if that is possible. Those three, uh, Amira cannot be traded out. Why? That's the wrong button. Why, why, why? Can I quick trade? Sure can. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. All right, let's see what that leaves us with. That leaves us with Inky Blinky, 
Clyde, Diamond, Oasis, and Flora. Beautiful. I think that's great. Because we still have our, our guy that is a good breeder. Although he is getting... Is getting slightly older. He is the... Oh, uh, well, I guess you're 27 and still going strong. So you're... All right. You're fine at 13. You're fine. Okay. Great. Uh, red crowned cranes. We don't have quite as many of these guys as we do the flamingos. But let's see what is going on with them. Oh, that's a lot of boys. <laughs> that is a lot of boys. So let's label like we need to. Who, uh, Hisaka? Hisoka? Uh, is your... Let's see your lineage. Okay, so you're one of our babies, and we definitely want to keep you. But Olympus and Hamiko. Um... So maybe we actually put you in the trade center for right now. And let's see if we can't get some more females for uh, Olympus here. And then I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that because I know I will get it wrong. You are not going to be a keep anyway, but you can be in the enclosure until you grow up. So let's see what we have as far as red crowned cranes go. Crowned crane. Oh, hello. Oh, it's a dash. That's why. Females is what we want. And it doesn't look optimistic. Uh, we have some slim pickings. Now, that would be great, but that's a male. Um, I'm going to go for you, Kana, because you're young and you're there. Great. Adopt, send to zoo. Great. Perfect. Let's get you in there. Beautiful. Uh, is that all my exhibits? I guess that's pretty much everybody we have, huh? We don't have too many exhibits just yet. Oh, and then... And then... Uh, storage. Let's... Yeah, let's quick trade all of these guys. And then we'll start paying better attention to them. But for now, quick trade. I Kind of, unfortunately, look at them as a little bit of a moneymaker. I don't know if that's bad or not, but that's kind of how I see them. Now, my plan for this area... Oh, and we got another reward. Habitat species. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. I will take that. Uh, as far as this goes, I was actually thinking... Didn't I save uh, some of the wall here? I guess not. But I was maybe going to take, like, say this right here. Is this just this one piece? Yeah. I was going to take this and kind of just make it so this bridge is not a viewable stopping point. Um, so essentially keeping, like, this little wall that I've already made, but making it prettier, right? Like, we don't just want this ugly wall. Um, and that way, as you're coming up over the bridge... It's still, you know, decorated, and I'll put some plants in the middle, like, in between here. We can look at that in just a second. Oh. Oh, dang it. I said I was going to do that off camera. I don't want to do that this time, uh, or right now. <laughs> so, I, I will, now that I remember, but I don't want to do it right now. Right now, we're going to make this little wall. Ooh, what if we connect? this and it's just like meant to be oh look at how perfect that is up a little bit and a little bit yeah beautiful i don't think you can get much more perfect than that kind of meant to be uh if i could line it up properly there we go great so yeah so then as you come in excuse me dang it do they not realize that they can't see through this that kind of sucks. Do they not realize that these objects are, like, not viewable? Because are you registering that stress? That's really all I care about. Um, where is stress? Social. So right now, you're, you're not actually stressed. But they definitely are viewing them from here. Do you have thoughts? Now, where is the greater flamingo? Um, okay. We're... Why are they so dumb? 
<laughs> so dumb. Uh, a zoo ticket price. Uh, the zoo ticket price is great. Okay, fantastic. Well, then maybe they can't actually view through here. They're just pretending, I guess. Oh, this is bothering me, but I don't want to fix it. <laughs> but it's bothering me so much being like this. Can we do like a really quick fix, I guess? And just slide this back and kind of rotate it just, just a smidgen. So it just looks not so terrible. I guess that's not that bad, right? That was a pretty easy fix. Okay, maybe I shouldn't complain so much. Um, can I click on this? Did I? I did. Okay, fantastic. I was hoping that I was nice to myself and put those all in one group. And I did put them all in one group. So that's awesome. Let's put this back over here in the corner. And then we can kind of get this to pretty much just line up. So maybe that was an easier fix than I thought it was going to be. I honestly was thinking that was going to take me um, some like actual time to figure out and get it all correct. But that was relatively easy. Let me get rid of those. We don't need those anymore. And I'm just going to slide this over to the right ever so slightly. Um, and that way, I guess I don't need that one. That one can stay where it is ever so slightly so that it's inside that pillar. Beautiful. Um, we really don't need this sign here, but maybe we move it. Maybe we move it over here because then it's still it's still viewable, right? But like closer to the exhibit. How's that? That's pretty good, right? And then maybe we can try to get rid of those walls all together and we'll see how they do with just that. I kind of want to raise these a little bit. I don't know if I'll hate it or not, but let's see what I feel like. And hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of slower, real time uh, listening to my thought process a little bit more. Because <laughs> I know that sometimes the speed builds can be a little bit hard to follow. So hopefully this is a little bit easier and uh, a little bit more fun uh, on occasion. Obviously, I'm not going to change the entire way that we do um, episodes and things like that. But, you know, it's nice to switch it up every once in a while. Let me get this here just so that it's like complete. And there's not an empty space in between. That's probably good. I hate this this weird gap, but I'm going to live with it because I don't think it matters much. The flamingos don't get over there anyway. So there we go. So there, that actually doesn't look too bad, right? Yeah, I like that. And then we can plant this and fill it up so it's not such so much of an eyesore. Let me adjust this very slightly. And I kind of like the rock coming over onto the path. Kind of makes it feel like I don't know, like you're in nature, <laughs> I guess. Uh, we'll just rotate this a little bit so it's not clipping. That way it is perfect. Yeah, great. Okay. So then maybe we can do something really similar with the red crown crane in that we can just kind of duplicate this, slide this over to the edge of this path, bring this back maybe to like there and rotate. That way it, it meets up with like this rock structure right here. So on the inside, it'll meet up with that. And then we're going to have to rotate these ones. They're obviously going into the path. So let's get them going a little bit straighter and not clipping so bad. That's not bad. Maybe a little bit more back through here. That's what's nice, honestly, about these types of fences is they're so easy to just kind of rotate sections of them because they're not perfect. And so you don't really have to worry about them maintaining like their perfect appearance as you're moving them around. And this actually meshes very well right into this. If I just straighten it out and get it connected to this wall there. So that is that's beautiful. Pretty perfect. Now, for this fence, hopefully this is as easy of a fix as the other one was. We'll just slide this back over onto the path. I think widening it was a good choice. I actually 100% uh, forgot that I did that. But good job, Savannah. I agree with your thought process of the past. 
get rid of all these so they're not sticking up through the ground. I kind of like that rock work there. We will leave a trash can somewhere that it lets me. How about right there? And then we duplicate it and leave another one there because I don't think we could ever have too many trash cans. Maybe one... Oh, okay, I can't put it on the incline, so that's nice. Maybe one right next to the donation bin? Right here where it's not clipping through a rock? Okay, great. Not going to let me. Fantastic. How about here? How about... There you go. Beautiful. Never too many trash cans. I hate this one, so that one's going. We have one on this side, so that's great. Yeah, and then we just need to get rid of these three. That way it opens it up a bit. And there's our path. And it really seems to be helping, actually. So I'm actually really happy with that. Move our little sign backwards. Get everything out of the path, out of the way. That way we have a nice, beautiful entrance. I'm so happy that was, seems to be an easier fix than I was seriously anticipating. I was really thinking it was going to be uh, kind of a nightmare. Kind of a nightmare, not going to lie. So glad that it is not. This, I don't know. I guess this will fit. It'll just clip into that one uh, kind of a lot, but that's okay. Wow, such an easy fix. Okay, and uh, that donation bin can go right there. That's perfect. Awesome. I love that. I'm really, really happy with how that's coming out. Now, as I mentioned, we can probably add some plants and stuff maybe in between here or something. Um, but I guess for now, like I said, I, I am really happy with this. Unfortunately, it's not quite like the walk in and see birds on either side like I kind of wanted it to be. But I kind of feel like this is a better option than maybe just moving the animals all together. Like, I mean, the stress is great. Stress is at 100% and he's standing right here. Um, there's not really a big traffic jam, so that's awesome. People are gathering a lot right here, but that's the viewing area, so that's where they're supposed to be. Same thing with this on this side. And they're really not our biggest ticket item, so I'm kind of okay. Big, biggest ticket item, excuse me. Not biggest ticket. Uh, biggest animal, most appeal. They're not, you know, not a ticket, not an amusement thing. Anyway, uh, and people are flocking over here to our porcupine. And the porcupines absolutely have enough hiding space. So I think that that works out beautifully. I mean, they are hiding a little bit more than I kind of want them to. But, you know, bakers can't be choosers. Do we have some more vet research for our porcupine? That would be awesome because it does look like they need a little bit more enrichment. Uh, specifically toy enrichment. So let's take a look and see what we have. Um, species, African crested porcupine. We want toys. What can we put in there? I think I already put a water fountain. Maybe we put a ball. I really hate how these look, so I'm just going to put one in the back. Um, that didn't really help. Uh, well, I mean, it helped a little bit, but not a lot. This, I, can we fit this? Is this really even going to do much? I kind of don't like how this looks, but maybe right there is not bad. I guess right there is not bad. Um, and that fulfills the toy enrichment, so we'll leave that. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Right there in the back. Beautiful. They can't really walk through it, but it just being there uh, fulfills the need for enrichment. So I am happy with that. And that's great. Okay. Um future plans to be honest because that looks like we are doing uh fantastically i mean the zoo is being profitable we have so much money um our animals are all doing fantastic so i really couldn't ask for anything more now as far as future animals go um i don't think i have my list anymore i had written down what the individual appeals are for all of the arid animal pack animals because I was going to try to go through and add more of them. Um, which I think the sand cat could be a good uh, addition. But the one thing that I did talk about and I do still think is maybe we do a kind of mirroring exhibit over on this side. 
and it would need a different backstage back holding area um obviously because we wouldn't want it to go in with the porcupines but maybe if i get this i don't know somewhere i kind of want it to fit like right here so we might need to redo the back area for the porcupines but if we do something like that bring this down into the ground so it's actually you know touching the floor and not levitating but if we do something like that and then so as people kind of walk this way and walk around we'll do like a really similar animal that has a really similar need as the porcupine and it will be kind of off this one building let me see about leveling this terrain really quickly and make sure oh is that really i guess i guess it is higher up okay well that's why it was levitating so let me just do that a real quick bring that all up and then we can get rid of this and we can bring this up so that it's not sunken into the ground although the path the path is the problem so maybe we don't do that maybe we actually do let it be a little bit of a decline and we bring all this down can you go flat that would be great thank you so much all that flat okay beautiful and then yeah so then we have going around the corner we have something else and we can kind of just continue on like this right here will be the corner of the building obviously and if we bring this over i don't really know do i want it to be a 90 degree angle I guess it's fine being a 90 degree angle right here because it, it kind of meets the path, right? And I really don't want to roof anything else that's like also terribly curved and not 90 degrees <laughs> because that's kind of a, a, a really big headache. Uh, although I would kind of want it to similarly be curved like this. Do I have those wood planks on the same... I do. Oh, what a good job, Savannah. What a good job. You know, sometimes, sometimes I know what I'm doing. Sometimes I set myself up for success. So let's see if we bring this back to about, where's the edge of my thing? About like that, I guess. Yeah, because that's the edge. That's the edge of the enclosure. So if I do that, and we get rid of this one and this one and we'll have to extend this oops extend that over so that it matches this wall and it pretty much matches almost perfectly we'll do that and then these can just go straight across to fill that gap like that um we can replace this this is the what mud wall yeah so mud wall mud wall with a taller skinny one like a so and that way i don't have to worry about moving around this back wall but we bring this over to meet that corner doesn't have to be perfect because i'm going to adjust the trim and then we slide that until it meets and uh we have a really funky looking inside part, but you know, I don't do interiors, so I don't really care. <laughs> From the outside, it's functional. And then what we'll do is we will have to really adjust the porcupine uh, stuff because this exhibit is going to have the door right here. So it's going to have to, the backstage for this one's going to have to go over here if we need it. And that means we might have to extend this just slightly because I did just take away some of their space. So I'm going to do this for now because we aren't going to complete this. I'm just kind of putting it where I think it might look good. Um, and we got to move this tree because now it's growing inside the exhibit and that is less than ideal. So let's move this over here. And you know what we'll do? Uh, let's do let's do a poll. Let's do a vote. Um, I want to know which animal you want in this exhibit. And before you comment, I am going to give you options. So just hold on one momento and we will go look at animals. And I'm also going to write them down as I tell you. And that way I'm not a liar and I can remember what I uh, what I told you. So let me grab my 
notepad, my pen, and piece of paper, all that kind of fun stuff. And let's look at the animal trading. I'm going to start by typing in, not in my storage, that would be helpful, typing in Africa. So we're not going to put a buffalo. We aren't going to put penguins. We're not going to do an elephant or a wild. Okay, so none of those. Um, so meerkat <laughs> is one option. Um, yeah, meerkat's one option. You know what? Why am I doing this in the trading thing? That's what this literally what the Zootopia or Zootopia, Zoopedia is for. Let's do continent and let's do Africa because this is this is, I think, going to be the start of our little African area. Oh God, protesters are here. Let me pause it. Just one sec. Um, uh, How much space do the porcupines need? So for two of them, 365. So what I would like to do is I would like to pick an animal that needs either that or less, which I don't, it's not the aardvark. Um, what are we doing? 365 um we could do a tortoise i feel like that's really boring um and also doesn't really go along with having like a mammal next to the porcupine which is what my original thought was warthogs i feel like would do better over with the red river hog somehow so i don't think that one works um a fennec fox could be good and look they really don't need a lot of room so fennec fox is definitely on the board so fennec uh fox writing that on my list um none of those none of those definitely not a hippo uh a meerkat also like i said uh to begin with does not need a lot of space so meerkat is an option as well and i feel like is the sand cat african yeah sand cat right here Oh, that's four of them. Okay, I was like, oh, that's too much space. But we could make it work, especially with a with a back holding area. So sand cat. Sand cat. Beautiful. And then um uh, that's pretty much it. So between those three. Cause I I kind of do want to keep it African because I think we'll do kind of an African section going off uh that way. And we'll kind of go from there. Did I raise that on purpose or lower it? I can't quite tell what I'm doing with the terrain over here. Okay. Um, so yeah, so actually, you know what? I do kind of like this little layout here and maybe we could do a fun little sign right there. Yeah, I like it. We can do a donation box right here in this corner. Cause you know, every empty corner needs a donation box, but also a trash can. Uh, where did my trash cans go? Can I have one? Thank you. Bring it over here because I just realized I don't think I have any trash cans anywhere near here. Why are you snapping inside the exhibit right here? That is bizarre. Okay, there is fine and here is fine. Okay, great. So now we have a trash can. Hopefully our guests are less pigs than they normally are. We have vet research complete and then we will tackle our protesters and that'll kind of be it for the episode um where are they and what are they mad about i don't oh i do see them they're right here why man <laughs> i thought it was gonna work uh hamiko hard shelter stress so it is stress from the people so there's a lot of people gathering there, not so many people gathering here, but let me hear me out. What if we get rid of that and we continue on this? I'm blocking off more of the exhibit than I was originally anticipating blocking off, but if they're going to freak out and be nervous little wrecks, maybe it's worth it. So we do that and then we take this part and get rid of this. That was a little more than I kind of wanted to get rid of that. And then the only way that they can view them is right there. Is that weird? Also, apparently this didn't get uh, duplicated right there. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Is that weird? I mean, when you're coming down here, 
I guess not too much, right? Again, it's it's less than ideal. It's really not what I wanted to do, but if it keeps them happy, I deleted that rock. Does that matter? It does. Go back. I like that rock. It's a nice boulder. Anyway, uh, maybe that'll help, I guess. Gives them a little bit more hidey room. Is his stress going to go back up? It's going up now. So that, it kind of seems like it helped, right? Because clearly, I mean, clearly he's not stressed. Are you guys stressed over here? Theirs is going up as well. Okay. Well, uh, if it's working, then I'm willing to leave it. I'm just going to watch him for a second here as he kind of sits. It's still going up. And, and it kind of... Oh, God, I can hear them. Dude. Hey, we just fixed it. Look at how happy they are. Can you leave? Speed it up. Can you leave? These birds, man, are happy. Thank you. Get out of here. Goodbye. Gonna make them more stressed by screaming at them. Um, their hard shelter would really help, too. Like, having more hard shelter. Is there a map setting for that? Um, habitat? Reversible area? Shelter. That's seriously all the hard shelter you think you have? Okay. Uh, well, what if I, what if I move this slightly over onto the ground? I don't like it over there. Dang it. What if I move that there? Does that help? And what if I take this one and move it like here so that it's not on the, um, whatever that's called. And then maybe we duplicate one and put it back over here. Here? Here. Here? God, I don't know what to do because it's looking like too much. I guess there? How does that work? I'll just give you little umbrella spaces forever. Uh, 55, I've brought it up. Um, habitat is the correct size to house all animals, but just barely. That's also a problem. What if? Uh, is this all one piece? It's not. But what if we, um, what if we bring this back? Let me pause it because I don't want to, like, set my animals free. But if we bring this back to basically meet the building and they can have that space, because that's easy to give them, I can leave it there I can delete that and then we can just make a connecting piece actually I don't need to delete that we can just move it um, over to this side to kind of help connect up this side piece here rotate that around bring this here is that gonna connect nice oh god I'm so good sometimes <laughs> Sometimes I, uh, I impress myself just a little bit. So there's that. And now let's fix the barriers because otherwise we're going to have some escape problems. Let's move this into here and this one over to here. And I know we're going to have to make it prettier. But I kind of like that. It gives them a little bit more room. Let's see what it does. Uh, it definitely gave them more space. I mean, it's still not in the green. Oh, they have too much sand, too. We can help that. That's probably just because I moved the thing back. But let's see. They want... They can have more grass. So maybe we do more grass back here. There. Okay, that's... I mean, that's about as good as I can get it. 55% hard shelter is not that bad. And everything else is green. So that'll at least maybe help a little bit when the protesters come you know marching through but yeah look they're already using the space and they can get a little bit further away from uh from the guests so i kind of like that what the heck is over here what did i do in this oh i 100 percent forgot that we put snake snakes over here oh there's only one of them desert horn viper that's right because i couldn't find another one 
desert horned viper. God, they're all males still. Why? I want a female. <laughs> I don't want just males. All right, you guys. Uh, that's basically it. So what do you think? <laughs> do you think it's coming together nicely? Do you like the changes that we did? Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit more of that maintenance episode, getting caught up, getting our animals all labeled. Next time we will continue work on this and then maybe a little bit out there as well. Um, I'm kind of envisioning like this, kind of this whole section over here to be Africa, really. Um, because the, uh, the Red River Hog here, maybe we could do Warthog off the back of here. We're going to do either Meerkat, Fennec Fox, or Sand Cat right here. Maybe some bigger animals over here. Um, maybe a Jeep ride? Should we do a Safari? I've never really played around with the, uh, the transport rides or the attractions in Planet Zoo, so maybe I need to. Um, but yeah, let me know. And then thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope you again enjoyed it. And if you made it this far, leave a like, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, you can still use the code simply for the entire month of August to get $5 off Zoo King, which is the best zoo building card game out there. Thank you so much for putting up with the ad in the beginning of the video. I'm really excited to partner with this company. Um, so get yourself a discount. It's not too early to Christmas shop. So enjoy that. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.